Designing your very own dream DIY adventure van can be a very daunting task, especially if you're trying to use programs like SketchUp. Well, not anymore. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Riley Clark. I am an outdoor nature photographer based out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Last year, my dad and I converted a Sprinter van and we have recently begun doing renovations and a remodel, which I covered in last week's video. So if you haven't watched that video, then maybe click right up here and give that one a watch. This video is going to cover a few specific topics. We are first going to discuss whether or not you really need a 3D drawing system like SketchUp. Then we are gonna dive into SketchUp and I'm gonna show you guys some of the key tools that you're gonna need and some of the processes that help me when I'm designing inside of this program. And then we're gonna put all of that together and build a basic cabinet together. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my design and what I'm planning on doing in the redesign of our cabinetry inside of our Sprinter van. So what is SketchUp? SketchUp is a 3D modeling software that allows for you to build 3D models using specific measurements and materials. And the next question for you as a DIY van builder is, do you really need SketchUp in your workflow? And the quick answer for me is absolutely yes. I know that it is an intimidating software, so that's why we're gonna cover some of those basics here in a little bit, but the efficiency both in the economic sides of building and also the time sides of things is undeniable. When you spend time designing and making your errors inside of a 3D system like this, you're going to save a lot on material down the road. Also, it makes things a lot quicker, so if you have the paid program, you can use features such as Open Cut List, which allows for you to use the program to build you out cut list so you can maximize your time when at the saws and doing all your cutting really essentially at one time and label all your components to be assembled later on. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about SketchUp is, yes, it is a vast program, but we only really need a few specific tools to design our cabinetry in our vans. The fact that you can actually have a 3D rendering of your model makes it very easy to work with when you're out in the shop. You can generate cut lists like I mentioned earlier. Also, it's super helpful to have a lap laptop when you're in the shop. So if you're looking to connect to a component and you're not sure where that goes, you can go ahead and look at the model in three dimensional space rather than having to look at 2D drawing. For me, my brain works a lot better with a three dimensional picture rather than a 2D picture because we live in a three dimensional world. So having three dimensional measurements and stuff just makes more sense for me. But that is enough of my short rant on whether or not you need SketchUp. At the end of the day, you get to make that decision. What I'm gonna do though is go ahead and jump in the program and start teaching you guys some of the basics of it and showing you some of the things that I like to do because by no means am I an expert with this program, but I've been able to create some pretty nice results by using some of these processes. So in this video, we are actually going to be using the free software from SketchUp. I do have the paid software and there is some features in there that again, like I mentioned earlier, you can't have access to inside of the free software. But for most of you, this is going to be plenty. And it's as simple as just going to the uh, SketchUp website and creating an account and all of that. I will link this down below for you guys as well. So the first thing that you need to be able to do is set up your workspace. And how I do that is I come up here to these three lines, I click on that, I go to app settings, and then right down here you see default template, fraction inches, that's what I like to personally work in because when I go to make something, you can see down in the bottom corner there, it gives you fractional elements to the measurement, which is helpful for when you are working with carpentry tools, they usually have fractions on them. So it makes it a lot easier than trying to do math to convert fractions to decimals and all of that. So that's how I like to have it set up and I like to have it set up in feet and inches. If you are not using an imperial and you're using metric, you can go ahead and do millimeters and centimeters and meters and all of that. So now that we've covered that, how do I get around in SketchUp? The tools are pretty simple. You have a pan tool, which does exactly what you think. It pans you around. You have an orbit tool, which rotates you around the three-dimensional space. And you have a zoom tool, which 
zooms you in and out. Now, you can either click all of those tools or what I would recommend is if you don't have a mouse, get a good mouse and your keyboard and use keyboard and mouse shortcuts. So for me, if I click down the middle roller, it pulls up my orbit tool, which is awesome. So I can just hold that and orbit around. And let's say I wanna go ahead and pan. If I hold shift while doing, while clicking that down, it lets me move pan. So again, I click the middle button down to orbit. I click the middle button down and hold shift to pan. Now for zooming, I can just scroll on my wheel and that will zoom me in and out. So you can essentially move all around by just having these few controls. So that's how I personally like to navigate around the space. And if you notice in the space too, we have all of these different axes. You have a green, blue, and red, which having this little model guy standing here helps you understand which one's vertical, which one's and where your horizontal lines are. And that is going to be helpful later on when we're doing some actual building. So we will get back to that later. But practice getting in and moving around the space because it's going to make your life a lot easier uh, when you go to design. So the next tool I want to talk to you guys about is the line tool. So if you come over here and click this pencil, this allows for us to draw lines. So if I click once, and then start to move my mouse, you'll see it's going to draw a line. Now, right now it's on the red axis. If I just kind of push up a little bit, it goes to more of a free form. And then if I go this direction, you'll see it's on the green axis. And if I go up, it will be on the blue axis, which allows for us to draw a vertical line. Now I can then go like this. If I click and drag, click again, it creates a line. And then if I keep going, you see it continues the line. If I go here and I click, then I keep going, I hit click, and if I go over, now I created a box. Very helpful tool. Um, one of the things I like with the line tool, and you'll see later on when we start to design the cabinet, is if I click and I go to drag my line, you can see down in the bottom right corner, it gives us a length measurement. So the cool thing is we can actually use measurements with this line too. So if I hit, if I click and I start dragging, let's say I want a 15 inch line, I just type 15 and hit enter. Now let's say I go up the green axis and I want a 10 foot line. I can hit 10 with an, with an apostrophe and then hit enter and that will give me a 10 foot line. And if I drag on over, I can hit 15, hit enter, and then all the way and complete our box. The system is always going to default to inches. So if you need feet, then you're going to have to give that apostrophe. You don't have to worry about putting um, a mark for inches. It automatically defaults to inches. With going back to keyboard shortcuts, which I recommend learning these, if I hit spacebar, that's gonna give me my select tool back. And if I hit L, that's gonna give me my line tool back. So spacebar, L, I can also hit H for our hand or pan tool, and I can hit O for our orbit tool. Again, use the other shortcuts that we mentioned earlier, but it is helpful to go back and forth between select and line. If you hit Control Z, it also undoes your work, and if you hit Control Y, it will redo your work. So those are a couple keyboard shortcuts there that I would write down if I'm you. Okay, so for the rectangle tool, if I come over here and I click this button, this will, if I click and drag, you'll see it creates a completed box for me. One thing too with this is we can also do measurements. So let's say we want a 10 inch by 15 inch box. If I start to drag, I can go type down here, 10 comma 15, enter, and it now made me a 10 by 15 box. This is helpful for when you're building out components with actual specific depth measurements, which you guys will see in our cabinetry build here in a little bit. But let's say I want a 15 inch line that is three quarter inch thick. So three over four. Now you can see it built a three quarter inch thick piece at our desired dimensions. Now let's talk about actually creating three dimensional pieces. Yes, we've had lines that we've drawn. We've had rectangles that we have drawn, which the keyboard shortcut for rectangle is R. But these are two dimensional. There's no 3D element to it. So how do we do that? Well, we come over here to what is called the push pull. 
you can either click on that or you can hit P on your keyboard. And the push pull allows us to make a three dimensional piece. With this also, you can also type in specific measurements. So let's say you want a 45 inch tall piece here. Well, I'm going to start dragging up and type in 45 and I'm gonna hit enter. Now I have a 45 inch tall piece. Now, how, how do I move this around the space? Well, I'll show you guys a, a couple little things here that I think are gonna be important are gonna help your workflow. If I come over here and I grab the move tool or click M on our keyboard, you'll notice that all these sides on our three dimensional piece here are individual, meaning you see how they highlight separate from each other? Well, if I go to move this, you'll see I can shift the perspective. I can drag it out more. I can make it taller. So if we don't want it to warp like that, because we are typically working in with boxes and stuff, what I need to do is grab my select tool by clicking space or coming over here and grabbing this uh, select tool. And then I'm going to triple click on any one of the faces of this component. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And now all of them are highlighted. And I can now right click and make this a component. And I'm gonna name this test box. Now if I go to move this, it all moves together. And then if I wanna move it up, it moves directly up. There's no warping going on, which is awesome. Now let's say I actually want to shrink this down and edit this. Well, if I double click, it now has me editing this component. Then if I click on one of the desired faces, let's say I wanna shrink it down, I click on that, I grab my push pull tool, and now I can push that top down. So components are going to be a big part of your success in designing. Now the cool thing with making components is that you can make every individual piece of your cabinet a component, and then you can make that entire cabinet a component. Same can go for if you're making drawers inside of that cabinet. You can go ahead and make the drawers their own component, the individual pieces of that drawer their own component, and the entire cabinet as a whole a component. So when we start to build our simple cabinet, I will show you that later on. And also in my build, you guys will see more of that labeling. Now, the last tool I want to talk to you guys about before we start doing some more designing with cabinets or building our test cabinet here is the measure tool. You can use this to measure between different elements. So if you have an exact measurement that you want to reach, it does help with that. But again, by typing in the measurements, that's honestly one of the easier ways of doing it. Now that we've covered those basics, let's put it to a practical use. And I encourage you to design along with me. I'm going to move pretty quick. So if you need to slow it down, make sure you pause and jump back and forth the way you need to. So let's go ahead and build a simple 40 inch wide opened cabinet with half inch material, which means that we need actually a 41 inch wide base. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and make this 41 inches wide. And let's go ahead and make it 26 inches deep. I'm going to grab my push pull tool and come up here and I'm going to hit one half inch. Now, if I grab my select tool, triple click, make component, let's make this cabinet base. Now that we have our base, let's go ahead and make our two sides. Now I want this cabinet to be 33 inches tall and I need to account for some other material. So first I'm going to be using butcher block. So that is an inch and a half thick on, typically you can go ahead and get inch and a quarter, but for this design, we're just gonna use inch and a half. So if I have a 33 inch tall finished cabinet, I need to have that an inch and a half shorter. But there's also another catch. I want to also build a toe kick system in. And toe kicks are typically about two inches tall. So a total of three and a half inches needs to be removed to calculate my two end panels here. We can come over here, we can grab one half inch thick material that is 26 inches deep, okay? And then from here with a push pull tool, I can drag this up to 29.5 inches. Now we have an end panel. So I'm gonna grab my select tool, triple click, make component, let's call this end panels. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now I want to put this in place. So I'm gonna zoom in and pan to where I can see, and I'm going to grab this corner, this left corner, and snap it into place there. 
Now I'm going to grab that one again, hit control C, control V, and now I have a direct duplicate of our piece. Now this is where the measure tool comes in handy. I want to go ahead and, and find where our 20 inch mark is. So I'm going to click and drag and hit 20 inches and there is our 20 inch mark. Now we are using half inch material and I want that 20 inch mark there to be right smack in the middle. So half of half inch is a quarter inch. So I'm going to one over four and one over four. Now if I grab this piece, hit control C, control V, I duplicated it one more time and we can drag it to our desired measurement. Now I have three basic panels. Now what we can do is make this all one component. And one way of doing that is just by clicking with your select tool, dragging, highlighting all of them, right clicking, make component. We're going to look underneath the cabinet here and we're going to build our two inch toe kick. I'm going to measure in two inches on all four sides. Now what we can do is we're gonna use the line tool here and I'm going to build out my front face here. And I want the outer, this two inch line to be our finished face. So I'm going to click here, drag all the way over here, click again. I'm going to start working down this axis. I want a half inch th thick material. So I'm going to go one over two. That gives us half inch thick material. Drag on over, click here, and there we go. If I grab the push pull tool, pull that up by two inches, now I created a toe kick face. Now I want to go ahead and have this on the same or the same on the back side as it is the front side. So I'm going to triple click it, make component. Now if I hit control C, control V, I can go ahead and so you can see it's sucked up into the cabinet. So if I hit up on my keyboard, that's going to be my vertical adjuster. Now I can grab this corner and lock that into our measurement there. So now I have both of those toe kicks. Now I need to create the other side toe kick. So what I can do is grab my pencil tool, drag over one half over, finish that up, push pull tool. Let's call this one, or this needs to be two inches thick. And then triple click, make component, I'm going to hit control C, control V. You see it did the same thing. So what we're gonna do is hold up on the arrow key and zoom in, grab this corner and snap it to it. If I hold shift, I can click on all four of these components, right click, make component and call this toe kick. And now I can move all of these as one if I want. And then if I just continue to click in, it will let me edit the individual components. So I wanna go ahead and make a back support now. So I'm going to grab my line tool, click and drag. I know I want this to be three inches thick or wide. So now I have a three inch wide piece. I'm going to drag over. One thing here is make sure it snaps to that red line. If not, you're gonna have a skewed line. So it snapped to red, we're good. Finish our box out. Now I want that back edge flush to the back edge of this piece. So I'm going to push pull the inside of this by half an inch. Now I'm going to grab my select tool, right? Triple click, make component, back brace. And let's hit control C, control V to copy that. And we're going to now make this piece match that piece. Now I have some back support. I'm going to hold shift and hit click both of them. Hit control C, control V and now I have both pieces locked in. And I would typically spend more time designing out where I want these to go. I'm going to now do it one more time so I can get my spacing right. With both these collect or selected still, I can grab this corner, snap it to it. Now let's measure the depth or the distance between these two pieces. It's one foot, 11 inches, 11 and a half inches. So that is 23 and a half inches. We have a three inch material. So what we can do here is 
we're going to click and drag this down. Half of 23 and a half inches is 11 and three quarters. So I'm going to drag and I'm going to type in 11 and three quarters. That is my mid mark. Now what I can do is click this component, hold shift, click this component, grab my move tool, and we're just going to drag this up until that is halfway through, just creating some even spacing. I would probably spend more time really designing that out, but for the simplicity sake of this video, just working through the tools, we were doing pretty good. Okay, now let's build a countertop. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to drag or click and drag from that back corner and build myself a top. We're gonna grab the push pull tool. I know my countertop material is an inch and a half thick. And I also know I want a half inch overlay. So before I make this a component, I'm gonna go ahead and make a half inch overlay on these three sides. Now, I don't want a half inch overlay on the back because uh, that is going up against the van and there's no need. So I'm going to triple click it, make component. Now things are starting to mix together a little too much. So I'm going to go ahead and color separate these. So if I come over here and grab my paint bucket tool, browse through and let's use some wood colors and let's make the cabinet this wood veneer color. So I'm going to click on those. Then I want to make the countertop, let's say this wood, lighter wood floor coloring, just for right now, just to help separate things. Now, one thing I wanna to talk to you guys about components is, if you notice, let's say I wanna shrink this left side by one inch. Click and grab this component. And if I grab my push pull tool, I can pull or push this piece in by one inch. Now the problem is, you notice that all of these pieces became or edited the same. It's because we made copies of those. So if I hit Control Z, if I right click and hit Make Unique and then delete these two, what I can do is come up here, double click into it, grab our push pull tool and move this in by one inch. I can then hit Control C, Control V, copy this. We're gonna do it one more time and then I will get my spacing locked in better. I'm going to double click in to grab this piece. We're going to move this over by one inch. And now what I can do is double click into this component here, grab our push pull tool, move this over by an inch and all of them should have moved together, and they did. Now we need to balance this piece out, so we're gonna double click this just to make sure that it matches. What I'm not gonna do is continue building this out. You guys hopefully get the gist of how to do this. This is a very subjective thing because all your cabinet needs are gonna be different than mine. But if you have more questions on how to do more advanced things, then let me know down in the comment section and I will maybe make some follow-up content about it. But let's go ahead and dive into what my build looks like so you guys get an idea of what to expect moving forward in our build series. So starting in the back, because that's where I built and designed everything from, was the back forward. I made matching plumbing and electrical cabinets, meaning these are both the same exact width and depth. On the electrical side, you'll notice that there is a door here and some doors here. And what those are is the place where the inverter is going to go. I'm going to have my battery shut off and all that mounted out here. And then all of my components are gonna be inside of these slider doors if I ever need to get to them. This is going to be a false face that if I remove it, there will be the batteries there. And I will have some venting going on there. And then my 12 volt and my AC breakers are going to live in that area. On the plumbing side, it's a pretty simple build. There's gonna be some shelves and then this false face that if you remove it, you can access all of the plumbing. On the outside, there'll be the outdoor shower and a switch for the pump and that will pretty much be it. I have my bed platform, which is going to be the same exact bed platform that I already have in the van. Now let's jump to the front. On the driver's side of things, this is where the cabinet is going to be pretty tricked out and I'm excited about building this one. This is with all of the drawers and stuff opened, which I'll walk you guys through the individually here. And now that you see that, let's go back to our closed section here. So the refrigerator is going to live here. I have a drawer above that right here. This box is going to be our toilet box. And above that is a fake face that 
I'm using just for spacing and I will mount some power there. Over here I have two really nice big drawers and a tall skinny drawer and then this is a fake face for our drop-in which is going to have two different power outlets mounted in the bottom and I'll show you guys those when we go to build but they have USB and a ton of different power outlets and stuff and this is going to be where my camera equipment lives on the passenger side very similar to design to what we had before just a little bit more cleaned up this time on instead of a full box down here I am building out a cubby so we can have shoe storage and places to throw things that we don't want tracked inside of the van and one quick side note is I know the floor looks like short but our driver's seats are actually more roughly over here. So it's essentially the same exact layout that we had before in the van in terms of spacing for getting in and out, except it's actually squished a little bit more towards the back than before. On, continuing with our passenger side though, one of the things I wanna make sure I can do and work on is creating a flush finish with our dropout. And I'll show you guys when we do the actual build how I'm going to accomplish that. And you'll see it here a little bit too when I open these up. So we got the different drawers. We have a cabinet that opens up this way and a little tilt out for soaps and sponges. And if I look in the back here, you can see that it's gonna have a finished back as well as a place for it to fold, this counter to fold back up into the piece or the main unit itself. Now the Middle piece here is going to be a fake face as well. That's going to have some power outlets. And on both of these, there's going to be a power outlet on the back side located somewhere as well. So that when both seats swivel around, we have a place to be able to plug in laptops and work. And I'm also putting a swivel tabletop system similar to a lagoon system on both of these as well. So we have that and that should remove some of our rattle issues. Now looking at the upper cabinets, we have a very similar design to what we had before, except I shrunk the power box down, or not power box, our component box that's gonna house all of our gauges and switches and all that. And then also I have a place to now mount a microwave. So we have two nice big side, or two nice cabinets on the back and two smaller cabinets up towards the front and a place to mount a microwave. And then you can see we are going to go ahead and add a slat ceiling to our existing ceiling. So we will just put slats right over the top of our quarter inch that is also upholstered black. And I think it's going to look really nice. And we will use that, uh, those slat ceilings to hide where the cabinets used to be located on the uh, passenger side because we are going to remove that so we can have a place to sit up in bed and hang out. So if you guys want a more, ex, you know, breakdown of our cabinet tree and stuff, let me know. I will can do a more in depth. Obviously you guys are going to see more of that in depth as I build them. So if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified because that build series is about to kick off. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Give some of those other videos down. I linked down below a watch as well. That is all I have for you guys today though. I will catch you in next week's video.